So today we're going to look at the uh, mechanical anti-dive or the hydraulic anti-dive system that's on the front of some of the 1980s Hondas. This is a CB 1100 RD, um, and this is the uh, anti-dive device. And what you've got is you've obviously got the brake calipers here. And the brake caliper is allowed to pivot on the top part there, and it's bolted onto this piece here, which is allowed to move. And so this pin here is allowed to move backwards and forwards. And obviously, when the when the the brake disc is when the brake is applied, this pin is pushed forward by the braking force, and the movement of this pin changes the damping mechanism of the fork. And I'll try to show you how it does that. I'll put this off. It is. So in here you see that there is a spring and a piston. And in here, on the inside of it, you'll see there's basically two holes at the bottom. Get a better view of that. Two holes at the bottom and a hole at the top and a big seal. Now this seal only comes into effect when the brake is applied. Normally, in normal operation, oil will flow out of the top and through to these holes here and allow the suspension to operate normally. When the brake is applied and this brake moves in, in this direction, it pushes a piston and the piston seals against this hole here and so the, the fluid has to come through the centre of the piston and uh, we'll have a look at the anti-dive system to explain what that actually does. So here is the unit disassembled and um, that's the plate with the screws and um, that is the bleed plug, don't need any of that but these are the important pieces here. So there is the, the housing and you can see through the housing that the actuation bar here it's quite free to move, it wobbles about quite a lot. And you can see it, it acting on the inside of that hole. But when it's pushed up, it pushes this piston in this direction. And when the piston is not being active, when the brakes aren't activated, that piston is forced back by this spring. That spring pushes it back into there. And the sealing surface doesn't do anything on the top. When the brake is activated, that rod, that bar there, pushes in this direction and pushes this piston in against that seal. And so then what happens is the fluid that comes out of the hole isn't allowed to freely flow through this space here. What it does is the fluid is forced to flow through the piston. You can see here on the piston there are some holes. And so therefore the fluid is forced down through there and through those holes. Those holes then feed through here into this section here in there and in there is this thing here which is an adjustable orifice and you can see it's just basically a bit of brass with a dot on one end but the important thing here is that there's a hole in the middle of it that then allows the fluid to travel from there through one of the orifices and out and back out this side so you still have continuity between here and here it's just now controlled by this device rather than just being allowed to flow freely when the piston isn't sealed up against that seal. Now on here you'll see that there are a number of holes. There are three of them. A big one, a small one, and a medium one, like Goldilocks Breakfast. And then there's one where there's no hole at all. And depending on whereabouts you click this round will determine the amount of resistance of fluid between the centre of the piston and there. Obviously if you've got the, the if you've got this one here, there's going to be no flow at all, and therefore the suspension's effectively locked up uh, when, it, when it's under heavy braking, and the only fluid that'll pass from here to here will be when it actually passes over the top of that seal there. Um, the other parts that you'll see are, there's a hole here, and there's a screw with a spring and a ball, and that's just basically to make sure that when you turn this, it turns positively in 90 degrees. You can't accidentally turn at 80 degrees, which would then block off the hole. It makes sure it's 90 degrees, 180, 270, 360. And so therefore that indent ball clicks into the opposite side of the hole that's being used. And that is how a mechanical anti-dive anti -dive system um, on these CB1100R Hondas will, will work. All it does is, as I say, restricts flow. Well, when there's no braking, the oil can come through 
the, the hole in the fork and travel through this massive great orifice and back into the fork. And this device has no function at all. When the brake is activated, this piston is forced against the seal, which then reroutes the, flu the flow of oil from the fork through this hole, through the restrictor and back out there. And that is how the braking force makes the suspension stiffer. Hope that helps.